it may sound a bit of a like a bit of a surprise to you, but I consider it my primary job when I am preaching a sermon. My primary goal is to tell you what you already know, what you already know deep down in your bones. I have uh, heard of some more famous uh, Christian pastors uh, and speakers, and they say that the they'll often say that the greatest compliment that they ever receive after preaching or giving a talk is when somebody comes up to them and says, uh, you didn't tell me anything that I didn't already know. I'll phrase that a little differently. Uh, I already knew everything you already told me. <laughs> and that's what this spiritual life is, is uh, going back and affirming the things that you already know deep down in your bones, because sometimes we can forget it. Sometimes we can forget or uh, um, sometimes we can be distracted by what we know to be true about ourselves at the deepest level. And so my job is merely to remind you of the truth that you already know about yourself. So many people today are in a deconstruction movement uh, going away from the church, which I think is often sometimes the most healthy thing that we can do because sometimes the church does not tell us the truth about ourselves and the truth about others. The truth about you, that you know deep down in your bones, is that if there is a God, that that God loves you for now and for all eternity. That is the truth that you know deep down in your bones. The truth is also that you are created in the very image of God. And when God looks at you, all God sees is the image of God within you. You are a mirror to the divine. God sees you and all God sees is the image of God inside of you. You know this already deep in your bones, but you have been told lies. We have all been told lies. You are not alone in having been told these lies. Sometimes these lies can come from our parents. Sometimes these lies can come from some authority figure in our lives. Sometimes we get caught up in the lie, so caught up in the lie that we start to believe it, going against what we know deep down in our bones. That lie can often come off in religiously as uh, you messed up, you sinned, you are beyond the pale, you are outside of God's love. That is the biggest lie that religion can ever tell. It is not true. Because you know the truth deep in your bones that you are a beloved child of God created in the very image of God and nothing can take that away from you. So oftentimes what I find myself doing in my spiritual journey uh, and in my sermons is trying to, trying to wash away all of the lies that have been told to us. This is what spiritual water that Jesus is talking about in our passage is all about. Jesus talks with this Samaritan woman at the well and he asks her for a cup of water because Jesus is thirsty and sometimes even Jesus needs some help. And here is this woman who is there ready to help him on his journey to give him some sustenance. And then Jesus starts talking with this woman about spiritual water. It's a, it's, it's a water that 
uh, that is different from the physical water that they've been talking about. It's a water that that washes away the lies that have been told about us. This woman comes to the well and she comes at noon, the hottest time of the day in this part of the world. She comes when nobody else is coming. Why? There's a good chance that the people of her village have scapegoated her. We end up finding out that this woman has had five husbands and the, the person that she is with now is not her husband. Jesus says to this woman, this is what I want you to get from this story. Jesus says to this woman, I already know. Jesus goes further and says, I already know everything that you have done in your life. Now on one level that can sound kind of creepy. But on another level, this is the level that we are all looking for. God knows everything. God already knows everything. And God accepts you and loves you just as you are and just as you are becoming. Imagine being this woman. Maybe she has just been unlucky in her life and her five husbands have died. Maybe she's been passed around from husband to husband because these men don't want to deal with her or for some reason she can't get pregnant and the men just pass her around. Any way you look at it, this woman has had a really hard, difficult life. She might be blamed. She might be seen as being cursed and nobody wants to be around her in her community. But do you know who knows everything about her and loves her? Jesus. Jesus comes to her, says, I know everything you've ever done and I love you. Now, here's what some of you might be thinking. You might be thinking, yes, Adam, but you don't know what I did 20 years ago. You might be saying, yes, Adam, but you don't know what I did last week or yesterday or five minutes ago. And you know what? I might not know, but Jesus knows. And you know how Jesus responds to you? Jesus always and only comes to you in the spirit of love and acceptance. I don't know the story of this woman. We don't know the full story of what she had been through in her life. But we do. what we do know is that Jesus knows and Jesus loves her. And this, this radical love that Jesus shows this woman has been inside of her her whole life. She has already had this love and what Jesus does with this spiritual water that he is offering is he is offering to wash away all of the lies that have gotten her stuck into believing that she is not a beloved child of God. This water that leads to eternal life is, is this washing away of hostility that this woman might have this um, this self this self loathing that she might have that she's picked up from others. Jesus comes and washes it away, and she is so loved and so accepted by Jesus that she runs off to her community and tells everybody in her village about this man who knows everything that she has ever done and accepts her just as she is and just as she is becoming. That is what God is like. You know this deep down in your bones. You know that that is what God is like, and I am just here to remind you of what you already know. This woman goes, and she becomes the first person to teach others about Jesus. She becomes, the, uh, the, the big academic word for this is uh, 
she becomes the first evangelist. This woman, this this woman, who uh, some people in some churches say that women should be silent and not teach men. This woman becomes the first major proclaimer of the gospel, and she teaches it to a bunch of men. Can I get an amen in the chat section? This, this is Jesus affirming the full humanity, affirming the full image of God that is within this woman, restoring her back to herself and back to God, back to what she has always known to be true, that she is love and that when god sees this woman all god sees is the image of god reflecting back to god when god looks at you listen i don't know what you've done i don't know what you did 20 years ago last week five minutes ago i don't know you might you might say you just you don't know adam you don't know and guess what i don't you don't know the things that I have done. <laughs> but what we do know is that God always comes to us like Jesus came to this woman and says, I am not giving up on you because deep down in your bones, you already know the truth that no matter what you've done, God hasn't given up on you. No matter what you've done, you still have work to do. There are still people out there who need to know the love and the grace and the mercy of God that comes at us like flowing water to nourish our souls, to revive our spirits, to help us on the journey. And so, friends, my prayer for you is that you boldly live into the truth that you already know about yourself. That you are a beloved child of God, that you are created in the very image of God, that God loves you, and that you share that love with yourself and with others. May we do so now and forevermore. Amen.